Hello. Welcome to the stream. Uh, I'm going to get started in a second, but basically the stream is going to be all about how to make missions for Armour 3 um, and basically how to uh, do a couple of things in Eden, the mission editor for Armour 3, and then like get your mission, I guess, like playable by other people, like to a multiplayer kind of level. Um, so let's kind of dive in first with the Armour 3 launcher. Uh, just give me a second and we'll get started in a second. I just want to make sure it's available for people. All right, so first things first, um, basically you kind of, if you're making a mission for people, it kind of depends on uh, obviously your mod list and what you want to do for people. Like um, for example, you might want to do uh, like with the 143rd, which is the unit I'm a part of, we do a lot of um, Warhammer 40,000 uh, missions. So mainly like 40K, um, but we also do stuff like World War II. Uh, we do Tom Clancy's End War. We do like a Vietnam War one uh, without using the CDLC, like the new content. Um, people in the past have done like Stargate, Starship Troopers, Alien. There's a lot of different themes for Armour 3. Obviously, it's kind of only limited by your imagination and the mods available. Um, when you're looking for uh, mods, if you go to Steam and go to the Steam Workshop, this is a good place to find a lot of content. Um, you can sort, obviously, by stuff like uh top rated um to find a bunch of really good content for example operation tribute is quite a good halo mod um rhs adds a lot of real world content for like the us and russia and china and stuff like that um a lot of content uh on the workshops basically for example if you're making like a you know german uh bundeswehr like bun op or something like that you could you could basically you know see if there's anything available sort of in the workshop um and you know you find a mod and you can add it to your sort of subscriptions by subscribing there i'm sure you guys know how the steam workshop works but obviously have a bit of a play around have a bit of an experiment uh then from there when you're basically ready to build your mod list um you can basically go to the presets here and choose all the subscribed mods from this list here it's normally sorted by alphabetical order uh, and you basically just tick it to enable it, and then you can untick it to disable it. Uh, and from there, once you've saved your preset, I'll just use the uh, 143rd mod list as an example. This is our mod list that's mainly Warhammer 40,000 themed, and along with a lot of like um, extra mods for AI and equipment and maps and stuff like that. Uh, you can you can export it to your players so your players have access to the mod list by basically going down to here click more and go export list of mods to a file from here you can then export all your loaded mods as an html file that people can then install your list of mods from just one file uh, and then the launcher will download them rather than having to tell them to download each individual mod in this list um so that that speeds up the process quite considerably um couple of recommendations before we even get into the game uh, i highly recommend if you're going to be running missions you grab the mod here zeus enhanced it just adds a lot of functionality to in-game um the in-game editor and zeusing uh stuff like just 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 quality of life changes that make it a lot easier to run a mission as a zeus um and also in the same vein 
Uh, I believe we have it. We might not, but there's also there's also other options like that available. Like uh, one I quite often use is one called Threaded and Enhanced. Um, I'm a big fan of this one as well, for very similar reasons. Just adds a lot of functionality. But let's boot up the game and get into Eden, and I can basically show you some basics. Now, with this tutorial, um, the focus is not going to be advanced stuff. Um, I'm hardly the best mission maker. Um, I'm pretty pretty new to it myself. Um, and like, there's obviously a lot more advanced tutorials out there for doing crazy stuff and um, you know doing more with the platform. But uh, I think this is just kind of an overall broad look at like how do you do it, how do you set it up, and how do you get it like playable um, without going too far into detail of what each module does or what's available for everyone. Because um, obviously, depending on the model list, you might have more or less functionality like for certain things. I'm just going to turn off my to play display capture here. And it just takes a little while for armor to build up. Now, basically, once once you're in armor, there's a couple of things you should know about, uh, like things like settings. Um, with profiles, like your missions will be saved to your profile folder, so it does actually matter which profile you're in when you're making missions. Um, I normally use the Dozet profile for most mission making. And we'll just try out. Uh, we'll just do it on classic stratus this is one of the game uh, maps that comes with the game um nice basic easy map uh there's other options available obviously but uh there's also you know mods can add a lot of more maps if you're kind of bored with the standard maps um i quite like like stratus and altus though they're good starting points if you've never made a mission before um and then there's obviously a lot of other options through like the dlc and through maps and stuff like that so once you go into the editor um, you should basically see this UI. If you don't see these menus, uh, you can click the little uh, icon on the top right and top left to bring up the menus. Basically, this left menu here, this is basically everything that's in the map already. As you can see, this is effectively empty. Um, you know, obviously not including stuff like the trees and rocks and buildings that are in the map already, but like nothing's been placed. So if I place like a uh, 40k hydro here um as you can see now it appears the, the the vehicle and then also the crew appear on this menu on the left here um if you click on an object and you press delete it'll delete it uh and then this menu on the right is basically everything you can spawn in as like an object so uh left to right you've basically got blue four so this is stuff like nato um in the base game at least and stuff like NATO, and then in our mods, we've also got stuff like Death Corps of Krieg, Imperial Guard, Space Marines, blah, blah, blah. Uh, op 4, typically like a, uh, like the opposing faction to Blue 4. Um, this is things like the CSAT in the base game, and then we've got stuff like um, Chaos, Renegades, but we've also got, you know, op 4, Death Corps of Krieg, if we even need to fight against them, or blah, blah, blah. Um, Independent is kind of another third faction, they can kind of vary depending on who you are. You can set uh, allegiance later. And then you've got things like civilians and finally props, like static objects. So this is stuff like uh, buildings, like if you want to put like a little booth down on the ground. Or like a lifeguard tower, for example. Um, or things like, you know, you want to build like a big building somewhere. That's pretty easy to do and manipulate and kind of make your mission how you want to. So, from there, we've basically got, you know, the editing suite and, like, what do we do with it? How do we sort of set up a mission? Um, firstly, there's a couple of menus up on the top here as well that are important. Uh, obviously, Scenario has your classic, you know, sort of program stuff, like saving. So, let's say we're working on this. We'll just do this as, like, we'll call it a multiplayer mission. And we'll call this um, Eden Tutorial.
and all that basically does is save it in Eden. So if you need to work on your mission, you can basically go to load or open um, and just pull it up and we can then continue where we left off. So it's, it's, it's your classic save. Um, that isn't necessarily saving it ready for play. It's more like saving it for uh, editing later. So uh, now up here, we've got obviously edit. This is things like setting the surface snapping and stuff like that. Um, and then undoing and redoing kind of very standard editor tools um what surface snapping does is stuff like this um if i set surface snapping on and i do the speech both it'll 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 like snap to the ground i don't know if you see it there but it's like snapping at a certain point in altitude when i pull it down it goes click and snaps into place on the terrain or if i turn surface snapping off i can then just kind of put the booth wherever I like in that altitude, in that vertical plane. Um, so you can basically, you know, like face stuff into the ground. Um, so, for example, if you've got like, uh, this is a good example, these uh, graves. If you actually look at the object, it's got a lot more stone than the initial grave. And if you had surface snapping on, um, it'll automatically snap there. But, like, say you wanted for your mission, you desire this to be slightly higher for whatever reason, you could turn surface snapping off and have it slightly higher, like that, and then you've got a little bit more altitude on your grave. Um, obviously, that's kind of just personal preference and how you like to do it. Um, quite often, if you try to, like, phase an object into the ground, you can use, like, surface snapping to kind of do it. Um, for example, something I quite like to do for fun is, I think it's called the Freedom one of the props um also there's a search bar here so you can basically go in here and find whatever you're looking for i quite like to make uh this aircraft carrier into a ramp and i do that basically by turning you know surface snapping off um and then i also turn on the rotation widget and throw this thing into the ground like that and from there basically i've got a sweet ramp using an aircraft carrier and it looks quite, uh, I don't know, it's kind of visually arresting having an aircraft carrier stuck in the ground. Um, this is kind of the rotation widget basically gives you your three axes uh, to basically rotate around the object. Um, but there's also a way to rotate stuff just with a hotkey in terms of just on a horizontal plane. Um, and that is shift. If you hold shift and hold down the left mouse button on your object... You can rotate it around like this. And if you want to change the vertical altitude, you hold Alt. Oh, so the rotatable, I clicked the translation widget up here. This is like the default, which lets you move up, down, left, right on the various axes. If you click the rotation widget or press, I think it's three. So one, one is just like your classic select. Two is the translation widget which is like a vertical and horizontal movement on the three planes. Um, and then the three, or clicking up here in the top left corner to the rotation widget, that is your rotation on the three planes. So it's like, I think it's Z, X, and Y. Um, obviously, it's a little imprecise if you've already rotated the vehicle um, or the object or whatever you're moving. But yeah, with that tool, you can basically do some really fucky stuff like obviously i've uh, broken the aircraft carrier a little bit there because <laughs> i think the aircraft carrier is actually technically made out of chunks and as you can see here i've rotated the chunks off axes so you can see the aircraft carrier kind of split into multiple pieces uh but that's fine you can just delete it and spawn in a new one if you break it um but for now we're not going to use widgets because that's kind of more advanced that's more like um if you want to do something weird for now, we're just going to kind of use the standard no widget, which is kind of like a grab tool, I guess you'd call it, in other programs. Um, and this is where you can basically put down, you know, vehicles. If you hold shift, it'll rotate. And if you hold alt, it'll go up and down. Uh, obviously, we don't have vertical snapping turned on, so he's going through the ground. But if I turn that back on, um, it will go snap to the ground. But as you can see, it's not conforming to the terrain. And that's another tool. That's because I have vertical mode turned off or turned into non-vertical mode uh this basically means will an object conform to terrain or not so if i turn this on and to and have snapping on if you watch this you'll see the vehicle 
will click, oh, well, should do. It'll click into place and it will click to the right angle. So as you can see there, now it's actually conforming to the terrain where it's on the slope and it's like, you know, in the right place. If I move it around to this road, it's level. And if I move it up onto this hill, it'll angle itself to fit the hill. So that's that's what you kind of, you kind of want this mode to, to conform and you kind of want snapping on when you're placing like uh, vehicles and people and stuff like that. Uh, again, if you select a unit and press delete, or hover over it and press delete, it'll delete whatever you've got on your screen. You don't actually need to select to delete things. Like I could deselect this guy, hover over it with the mouse and just press delete on my keyboard and it's gone. Well, let's save for now when we've got nothing. Um, let's kind of get to what the rest of these areas do. Um, view, obviously turn stuff on and off. If you just need to get an eye for things, you can turn off the foliage. I don't really use that much to be honest. I kind of like to know where the foliage is at all times um you can turn on stuff like night vision and thermal though to get a feel for it obviously it's day right now it's in the game so it's very hard to tell what's going on but if you go to attributes and environment i could change it to night and then night vision comes a bit more in handy comes a little bit more useful uh but let's leave that for now and turn it back to day and i'll come i'll come to the attributes menu in a second um from there obviously you've got uh obviously a flashlight as well if you need it but let's not worry too much about that menu because it's kind of not necessary really for getting a map going it's kind of more just advanced features um gent now the attributes menu is pretty important this is basically where you set up all the attributes of your mission so this is stuff like here you would have like your scenario name under gent so under the general category you basically got like scenario name so we'll call this uh eden tutorial also important tip if you hover over things in the menus you should typically get a bit of a description of what they do so if i hover over title it kind of tells me what that does um if i hover over that it tells you that uh picture text so i'll just say um going people how to make mission uh we'll say there's no dlc required so people don't need any of the official dlc to play it um you've obviously got more selections here for more customization of like your loading screens and stuff uh a lot of these features are for single player uh like if you have briefing screens and stuff like that if you're making a mission that you're going to put on the steam workshop for other people to play in single player this stuff might be more important we typically operate on like a dedicated server so i don't really use a lot of this stuff um but in general have a bit of a read hover over it should give you a bit of a feel for what it does and then from there you can kind of play test it and work out if it's something you want in your mission um down here this is pretty important this sets if um independent which is like the green faction uh basically these guys over here it basically sets if they're friends or foes of blue four and red four or blue four and ob four um so for example if i set this to swords for both blue four and ob four what that means is this faction here green will basically be enemies of blue four and uh ob four like both these factions here blue and red will be uh seen as enemies by green where if i set this to the cooperation hands or like the handshake um basically both these factions will see green as friendly and won't shoot at them and uh green will also see both of these as friendlies red four and blue four will always by default be enemies um but there is ways to fix that through zeus as well so you can still make blue and uh, blue and red friends if you need to but in the mission editor basically you're mainly determining who who's friends with independent which is green um also yeah you can do that you can draw a box around several objects and delete them all like that I'll drag the box out press delete it'll delete them all same reason same way to select them all uh you can also rotate multiple objects doing that so let's say all three of these vehicles need to rotate 180 i can just do like that and then place them move them around like normal um so all the same tools normally work when you're selecting multiple things which makes mission making a lot faster but for now let's get rid of those 
um so we've gone through the general menu the environment this is basically things like your uh time of day and weather um so for example we want to make it like early in the morning we can go like 6 a.m it's basically a standard 12 hour clock uh no never mind it's a 24 hour clock so you've got uh anywhere from on the 6th of july 2035 you've got anywhere from you know 100 hours it's all the way to you know 2400 hours or 2359 or whatever um so you've got you know middle of the night middle of the day stuff like that you can change the date and time this is more just for immersion doesn't really affect anything as far as i know apart from maybe like constellations in the sky or something like really abstract stuff your players probably won't notice to be honest i don't know if many people check the briefings that carefully to see what date it is but um it can be something you can play with uh from there you've obviously got your weather um how fast changes take effect um and then like if you want to turn rain on max and want to just leave it there you can just turn overcast to max and you should get some rain eventually and obviously it's a lot more overcast in the sky um you can do stuff like uh rain a lot heavier um you can do stuff like if you want lightning a lot more frequently um uh, you can even do stuff like yeah this fog so you can make it a lot mistier yeah you, know, you can see kind of the altitude of the fog so you can make your scenario kind of um atmospheric depending on kind of like what vibe you're going for you know if you want a misty rainy midday kind of mission these are some settings you could use um you can also set it so it's not just like maximum you can set it so it's like a forecast so it's like basically the initial cloud cover and then like how bad it will get like you know you can start at zero and have it like only go to 50 percent maximum rather than have it 100 and 100 so kind of the percentages you set basically set uh how bad it's going to get weather wise and like when basically uh there's things like waves or water settings um and your wind and you can set you know a couple of things there like where the wind comes from and stuff which might affect like planes or helicopters um depending on kind of your other settings so play around with it experiment um you can kind of use it as much or as little as you want it's not essential but obviously it adds a lot of atmosphere um from there we have the multiplayer menu this is another one that's pretty important this basically determines like a lot of settings around um what people see or how people interact with the game and multiplayer or servers um like for example I like to put description in here uh, as well so like showing people how to use uh, i like to ai means basically your slots your player slots whether they will be taken over by ai um or if they'll be left alone if you untick it so i normally leave this unticked so basically any player slots i have are not taken over by ai if they're not filled by players i'll kind of explain that a little bit more a bit later uh down here you've got stuff like how respawn works i like to use respawn on custom position i like to turn the respawn counter off and basically leave all these settings off and then set it to five seconds what this basically means is um once i set respawn positions people can choose where they respawn um out of those choices and there's like a five second delay between them dying and choosing a zone to respawn again oh that's gone to 52 let's change that to five <laughs> and down here you've got stuff like how um objectives and tasks work and how the revive mode works and stuff like that um i don't like to use this we mainly use with our server ace medical and like the ace settings uh ace is kind of like an advanced um like functionality mod that adds a lot of different features to the game um and through that there's a more different like a more complicated medical system we use so we i don't really bother with these settings but if you're using like vanilla armor settings you may want to play around with these with these choices i guess uh finally in the attributes menu you've got performance which is basically how the dynamic simulation works like where stuff spawns in for players and where um again i wouldn't worry about this stuff too much if you're using a uh, like ace and other mods um but again if you're making missions for people in like vanilla armor you may want to have a look at each setting and what they do um 
dynamic simulation basically as far as i know means simulation like physics and stuff like that basically the game running the systems and entities and ai only takes place when players are within these ranges so like the stuff will basically just not function if there's not players nearby which takes a lot of strain off the system which means uh, my, your server might run better or your mission might run better but again for our server purposes it's not really relevant uh tools is some more advanced stuff stuff like taking cool screenshots uh using the arsenal loadouts and uh the debug console and stuff like that so don't worry about it too much for this per this tutorial um settings is like your normal settings menu in the main menu but add-on options is kind of an important thing to touch on this is basically where you set all the traits of your mission for your mods um so for example like ace medical i was talking about earlier let's say i want to change the way uh like how often people get fractures in ace medical i can change the stat here let's say i want it 20 percent instead of 80 percent. i can change that setting here and that way in my mission if i go back into add-on options it should be yeah like the, the fracture chance is different now and you can set this for individual mods um you can save it as like a preset um you can you know import it from a like a notepad file um there's a lot of tools here for basically setting up your missions feel for how you want like for example i quite often like to turn off um ace overheating which basically means things like uh, weapons can overheat and jam um i find that just kind of annoying doesn't add a lot of immersion in my eyes no you know not enough to be worth it so i normally just turn it off but some you know more milsim units might want to turn it on um or have leave it on and you know kind of tweak how it works um so basically this this menu the this this configuration menu lets you change all your settings for all your mods um that use this menu so at the moment you can see it's basically just ace acx uh, cba dui uh the lambs ai modules and stuff like zeus enhanced like how it basically works or what it does some of these settings might be a bit daunting so don't worry about playing with it too much until you kind of know what they do um so i would thoroughly recommend playtesting your mission playing around going why is this not working the way i want it to and finding out uh odds are someone online has done it before you and if there's no guides available feel free to reach out to me as well and be like hey this is being weird in this way what do you think that might be and i might have an answer or i might know someone who does um from there obviously you got your standard you know main menu settings here as well um i have my settings turned pretty low just for performance reasons i'd rather have a high fps when streaming than uh pretty graf graphics but to be fair the game looks pretty meh at these settings <laughs> in my eyes um so yeah you can kind of play with stuff there and then finally the play menu kind of lets you play test stuff if you want to play it as uh in single player test it out that way or if you want to test it in like a multiplayer and you can basically local host it or internet host it from this menu um to test it which is pretty handy for basically figuring out what's going wrong or what's going right now let's kind of talk about the menus a bit more uh by that i mean the left and right menus like the left menu it kind of doesn't matter as much it's not like this this menu you probably use a lot less to be honest um than you will use the right menu the right menu is kind of more important so let's just minimize this one and talk about this right menu a lot now i did show you blue four op four independent civilian and props but that's only the first kind of category on this menu um there's also so this is individual objects from there you also have compositions now what compositions are you'll see they're split into the same categories compositions are groups of the same thing so if i go to death corpse of craig again instead of just being one individual soldier it's now squads so if i put one of those down it's a full squad of people um and you can still move them about you can still move them about as a group or as individuals it doesn't change that it just makes mission making a lot quicker when you're going i want to spawn in some enemies let's spawn in a whole group of enemies rather than just one individually at a time and this way they'll be set up like a like a proper squad would be you know you'll have a team leader you've got a rifleman with heavy at you've got a rifleman with uh heavy at and you've got like a heavy at guy which has just got like a standard of rifle so you know it kind of changes the composition of how the squad works um some squads for example might have like medics uh like this squad here you've got um 
you know, kind of a varied, you've got a combat lifesaver, which is like a type of medic. You've got rifleman, auto rifleman, marksman, rifleman. Maybe another team leader, squad leader. So it basically just like develops it a bit more, I guess, thematically. Um, you have obviously compositions of units. So, and then you've also like civilians, for example, there's no compositions because you don't really get squads of civilians. They're normally just individuals. Um, and then props, you've got stuff like, instead of being like an individual building, you have stuff like a checkpoint where it's like, you know, two flags and some cones. Um, there's mods that add a lot more compositions. Like there's some mods like the cup, um, I can't remember if it's cup terrains or cup compositions or something like that. It basically adds a lot of like camps and extra military outposts and stuff like that pre-built. So it's a lot, you know, this one here, camp crow, if I put this down. It's, yeah, it looks like a little campsite. You know, there's some sleeping bags and some sandbags and it looks kind of lived in, a little bit more lived in. So it's good for making, you know, kind of thematic areas. That being said, you can still move the objects individually or be like, I don't want any ammo crates there for whatever reason. You can delete those. It doesn't kind of stifle, you know, you might want to reorganize it a little bit. You can kind of move some stuff around. Um, it doesn't stop you from treating the objects as individuals. It just It's just pre-built stuff to place, basically. But... Let's get rid of all that. Um, now, something quite cool in this menu is you've got custom compositions menu. This basically lets you save um, compositions you've made yourself or others um, without having to, uh, you know, you can find a lot of compositions on the Steam Workshop or you can save something yourself. So, for example, if I want to make a custom composition of, like, you know, a couple of fences or something, you know, let's do something crook and dirty. Let's just do, you know, a couple of fences let's say I want to call this like a, you know, corner, corner cage or something, you know, it's not pretty, it's not, you know, anything advanced, but I can select both those objects and I can go to right click and I can go save custom composition and I could call this, uh, like corner cage and I could, you know, put it under category, uh, walls or whatever, or like, I don't know what you call it, like buildings or f uh, fences i think it was under like you can you can call it whatever you like you can call it a bridge but i i like to typically use whatever category um the objects came from if i can if i can so in this case you know you might you might call it like let's just say we called it uh accessories and you can save that as a composition and then you can just place down those corners uh like let's save it and now i've got corner cage as a composition here under custom compositions and i can place corner cage so the cows come home. Um, for example, a, a, a composition I found on the Steam Workshop that I quite like is this ancient temple. Um, it's very big, but it's basically a ancient temple uh, with like a causeway and then like a kind of a ziggurat at the end. It's placed a bit strange because vertical mode's turned on. So if I if I delete that and turn vertical mode and surface snapping off and go uh ancient temple again it should place it better this time yeah there we go so you've actually got the proper entrance uh through this tunnel and you've basically got like an actual cigarette that's kind of creepy and thematic i use this for my mac me sog um campaign which is like a vietnam war campaign with a touch of supernatural um for the guys so yeah now, something kind of important to point out while we're here, this is actually a good kind of learning experience. Um, as you might notice, every one of these objects in this composition has this little red, this little red icon next to it, uh, like a little button turned on. Um, what that is, is something called turning the simulation off. Um, when you place an object, let's place a new object. Uh, let's just place down this, uh, let's place down a Polaris with no, no crew. Yeah, down here in the bottom right, you can turn off the crew so you can place vehicles without anything on in them. So as you can see, if I place it with that unticked, it's empty. If I place it with that ticked, it's uh, got dudes in it. So let's just delete that. So I've got an empty Polaris here. If I wanted this just to be set dressing, um, the problem with leaving it like this is it basically takes resources from the server or the system host. Like if you're hosting this on your computer, it'll basically take more computing power to process this car sitting here doing nothing. 
um so if this is just going to be something in the background or just like you know it looks pretty what you can do is you can double click the object and bring up the individual object attributes um this is where stuff gets a bit more complicated uh where you can basically choose a lot of options like this is basically what's in the vehicle inventory um so you can get rid of all the ammo and weapons and shit if, if you don't want to have weapons and stuff in the vehicle uh you can turn on stuff like uh sort of attributes that different mods use like you can turn on uh the default intercom channel for the task force radio mod through this menu like there's a lot there's a lot of options basically of how these work um so don't worry about that too much but basically if we go up here to special states if we turn simulation off what that does is the object will freeze and it will ignore input and collisions so it take it basically doesn't simulate physics on the object so it takes less computing power to render and have that object in your map um from there as well you can also turn on simple objects on certain certain objects have this option some don't um and this basically saves performance a lot by as you can see there uh, the object will behave like a map object such as like rocks and trees which saves performance um this option is only available for objects where it leads to improved performance so yeah so some 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 objects won't have this tick box but if i turn simulation off and simple object on you'll see the object icon is now like grayed out and you've got that little red icon next to the object kind of icon uh now this object will basically not require as much of the server to handle so for stuff like static objects like a temple for example like this temple they've they've made it so every single one of these blocks has simulation turned off because you don't really need the physics engine to simulate this temple um and you might as well just turn it off and that will save performance um from here obviously you can still adjust to move the objects as needed so you can have like the temple entrance a lot closer to the ground for example or like even phased into the ground but uh it's it gets a little bit more complicated there so don't worry about that too much yet just get kind of a feel for you know placing pre-made objects and um basically like how you want your mission to go so let's actually do that let's build kind of an example mission and i'll show you how to set up multiplayer slots so people can join as certain types of roles and i'll show you how to set up zeus which is like the in-game i've always seen it as kind of like a dungeon master like it's basically the controlling player so you can do stuff like change the weather or spawn enemies and stuff on the fly live um, which adds a lot to the mission for your players. I'm just going to um, have a drink. There we go. So let's say I want a mission where we are a squad of NATO. I'm going to use NATO just because they're one of the factions that comes with the game. And then it's like you'll be able to follow along theoretically if you made a mission. Um, I'm going to have... It's just going to be me and my friend playing, let's say so we're just going to have uh him and me like slots for him and me and then we're going to have like an enemy an enemy force over in this like misty valley so first thing i'm going to place my enemies yeah it's maybe a little too misty uh let's do on the other side of the valley <laughs> um i'm going to place just a composition of csat also another base armor enemy team um and we're going to just do a standard uh so a standard rifle squad which is basically like a what's that one two three four five six seven eight it's like an eight man team with like you know one of every role um you might notice around this these guys you've got basically a blue line linking them what this does if you look in the left menu here is it, it they're all part of this group called alpha one one like they're all part of the squad basically and you've got uh like a hierarchy like they're all linked to the squad leader so the squad leader basically is in charge of the squad and what that does is you can set things like um how the squad moves um how they react to stuff stuff like that so if i double click this group you've got obviously stuff like formation um how like what their behavior is so let's say they're safe like they don't think there's any combat going on they're basically just sitting there um you know kind of blissfully unaware that we're coming so we've set them up as you know safe they don't think they're in trouble uh and they're moving slow you know they're just walking around um this little red circle around the squad leader that means he is the player character for or he or she is the player character for single player 
So let's turn that off. Let's turn this off. We don't want to be the CSAT soldier, and we're not going to be making this mission for single player. So let's just turn that off entirely. And as you notice, that red circle around that icon is gone. So let's have this just a patrol. Um, and they're just going to start here. And we're just going to leave that as it is for now. And, by the way, when you're moving around in the camera, there's a couple of different things you can do. Um, if you're moving around with the camera, you can right hold the right mouse button to pan, which means you can look around. Uh, if you hold shift, you'll move faster, much like a run. Um, so, this is me at normal speeds. And this is me pressing shift. As you can see, it's a little bit faster. Uh, left mouse button is kind of where you do all your selecting. Um... Uh, middle mouse button will zoom in and out. Middle mouse button? Scroll wheel. Scroll wheel will move in and out. Uh, and WASD is like your strafe and your forward and backward and stuff. Um, so this is like, you know, if I pan this way, I can use the right mouse button. And then I can use WASD to move forward, backwards, left and right. Um, it's pretty intuitive. Uh, Z is down like in altitude and q is up so just remember those, those are kind of useful uh, if you really want to get closer to the action you could just zoom all the way in but the better way is probably just to go close and then go z it makes it a lot easier to get into certain like little finicky areas like you want to put a guy down in this tower you can use q to go up a little bit and then kind of pan around until you get a good you know a good sight line and then you go you know i want to put a guy down pretty easy peasy with if you know all the controls um so what was i saying basically slots and setting it up um we'll set up how this unit works in game through zeus and i'll show you kind of how that works in a minute but let's go over here um now another hot tip for camera movement is the map if you press m for mic and your uh you'll get the map of like the whole the whole map um and you know you could just use this to find out areas and then go there manually like you could go to this airfield and go oh cool i want to go there and then manually, you know, navigate and find it uh, in the game world. But that's probably the slow and least efficient way to do it. Um, what I'd recommend if you press M, pull up your map, you find somewhere cool on the map where you want to go, you can just press the middle mouse button, and that'll basically move your camera there. So if you press in the middle mouse button, it'll move your camera there, and you see a nice little cone there of what your camera will see. And if you press map again, your camera will now be there. Because uh, of the fog, you can't see shit, so let's just turn that off. But our camera is now at the airfield. So if I press M again, and then I go back to where we were working, which is like the air station, middle mouse button, press M again, and oh, I pressed N, which is night vision, but I'm there. So I'm back in, uh, I'm back in the uh, air station. So that's a very quick way to move around the map if you need to quickly go and change areas to work on. Um, so use the map and then middle mouse button often and frequently. <laughs> which means the same thing um so cool so i've got my we've got our enemy squad and now we need our patrolling uh like player characters so we're just gonna start in this little courtyard here because it's kind of out of sight of the enemy and it's nice and like kind of relatively sheltered from them in case they do know we're there and let's say we're just going to be nato like u.s soldiers basically from the base game um and we're going to be a uh we're just going to be that's a good choice. Let's just be standard. Let's be a team leader, which will be my friend. And I'm just holding shift there to rotate this guy. So holding shift, so it's pointing that way. And then I'm going to be a marksman, let's say. And if I click it by default, you can see there it's by default linking me to his squad. Um, if you want to change this, what you could do is you could hover over that line and delete it. And now we're not in the same squad. And if you wanted to rejoin us, if you hover over the unit, you'll see down there in the bottom right, it gives you like a tooltip of what the different keys do. If we hold control, which is the group two button, we can drag, left click, and drag a line to this guy. And now we're grouped again. So we're, again, if you look in the top left corner here on this menu, alpha one, two, we are in the same squad again. Now, this, this is, I've placed the units, but I haven't really told the game that we're player characters. You know, I haven't told the game these are 
slots in a multiplayer lobby. So what I want to do is, I've basically, the game thinks this is a single player character, and the game thinks this guy is just AI. Um, so we want to change that. We want to basically have uh, friend one and friend two. So if we double click the unit, we see this menu. Now we're going to turn this off. So this turns this 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 unit off of being the single player character, but we're going to turn playable on. So we're going to turn it. It's basically this is a this is going to become a slot in the multiplayer menu, and we're going to call this guy friend one. So basically, what that does is it's uh, when you see in the multiplayer lobby, and I'll show you that now. If we go play play in multiplayer, and do it just a local host. Oh, look, friend one is now a slot I can choose in multiplayer. Um, but we haven't got friend two, because we haven't done that yet. So at the moment, the only slot available is friend one. So I can click OK and play as friend one. But we're not done yet, so let's just go back. And we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to turn playable on, and we're going to call this slot friend two. Which means now, basically, both those slots, and you'll notice there's a, now like a purple or a pink circle around these units. That basically means it's a playable slot in multiplayer. Now that would be enough. We could we could basically play this now. We could we could spawn in. We could run over there. We could try and shoot them, and they could either shoot at us or kill us or whatever. But let's say I I want my friend who's never played armor before. Friend one. He's going to be playing as friend one. He's never played armor before. Um, and I want to kind of make sure the mission runs smoothly. So I want to give myself uh, Zeus abilities in the mission so I can do things like change time of day spawn more enemies or delete stuff if stuff goes wrong um basically run the mission from inside the mission if i need to so how would i do that how would i make sure that my slot friend two is a zeus without friend one having that ability now zeus up here in the top right we'll see these we've looked at objects we've looked at compositions there's also triggers which adds some scripting stuff or not scripting but like uh, you can kind of affect how events happen. Let's not worry about that for this tutorial. Uh, waypoints, again, it's pretty similar. It's uh, forcing the AI to do certain things. I don't really use this in the Mission Maker. I do a lot of my AI stuff through Zeus, like in the mission itself. Um, and then finally, this is probably uh, markers is a menu where you can basically place like, you know, markers on the map before the map starts. So you can, yeah, tell people, uh, blow this up it basically just adds stuff to the map which could be a good way to show players like objectives or uh you know write out some radio frequencies or you know kind of just add a bit to the map again we won't worry about that too much for this tutorial um but this is the most important probably the menu most important menu apart from objects is the modules this is basically where you find all your modded content and your modules from the base game that kind of affect how the mission works what i mean by that is you can set stuff like um firstly this is where we're going to set up zeus so add the add the add the zeus functionality to our mission through this module but it's also where you can set up stuff like the fortify module which lets you lets your players place uh, objects which is part of the ASX um, mod, which basically lets your players place like sandbags or bunkers or whatever, kind of whatever you want it to, depending on your, the way you set up your configs. Um, it lets you add stuff like uh, intel or, um, you know, little briefings or little uh, like video effects and stuff. Um, it adds a lot of kind of additional things that might not be in your mission by default. So definitely have a look at the modules and, you know, oh, here we go. So, for example, a really important one is we're going to set a respawn at the start. And we're going to call this... Uh, we're just going to call this blue 4 base. And we're going to set it so it's not the leading side. We're going to set it so it only works for infantry. And it works for blue 4. So, basically, any blue 4 units can respawn at this place. Um, and it is direction dependent. So, we're going to make it so they respawn facing that direction. And that's our res that's our respawn position. So that's one thing you could you could put down through the modules menu. That's quite important. Um, next, we're going to add the Zeus functionality. Now it doesn't matter where you put this. You can put it anywhere in the map. But what does matter is kind of how it's configured. So I want only player two to have this. Now there's a couple of different ways you can do it. 
basically you can you basically whatever you put in the if you, if you double click on the Zeus module and go to the owner section here this is basically setting up what who has access to it and if you hover over it as you can see it can be a couple of different things but you're like oh what's an object variable name what's a player U U UID um like just because you can hover over the tooltip might not necessarily help you too much uh, so basically what an, a variable name is what you set up here so if i type in so let's let's say i call this guy this guy's called friend two in the slots but let's call him friend two in the variable name as well so let's say it's called friend two um for this just to just to save on problems later i'd recommend you just use lowercase and try and avoid spaces so use like under scores if you have to um just to avoid uh naming convention problems because it works kind of like coding i guess you want to try and like avoid problem uh, complexity you want it as simple as possible for the game to read um so i'm just calling him friend two lowercase no spaces up in the variable name the slot will still appear pretty like friend with a capital f and space because i've called him friend two down here but up here i've just called him friend two like that so if i go back to my zeus module and i go I want to put it in here under owner who has access to the Zeus interface. So if I type in friend two here, basically that that slot that that object whoever spawns in as that soldier will have access to Zeus. So let's just do that. Um, another option is you could put in like a Steam UID, so it's only a certain player rather than a certain slot. Um, but that's that's like a series of numbers. You can Google Steam sixty four ID and get that UID from that. Um, this is if like you want people to join any slot but they'll have zeus no matter what like if you want certain people to have slots um i use i use the steam uid when i can but in this particular case let's just make it that that one soldier like whoever logs in as friend two will have options with zeus so let's save that and let's uh let's play test it so if i go play to play scenario multiplayer down here or in the play menu you can just go in and now you can see there's friend one and friend two so basically if i spawn in since we turned ai off um for slots if i spawn as friend two there'll be no one will take over for friend one you need a real player you can make it so the game fills the slots that you don't choose with ai but uh let's just leave that off for now because it's a bit yeah i don't like it i'm just going to be friend two without anyone to play with some lonely <laughs> so from here we're basically gonna spawn in and as you can see we've got our map nothing exciting going on because i didn't put anything down in the markers and now i'm spawned in as that soldier and i can walk around and shoot and do all the standard stuff you can in armor but since i've given Ze uh, this slot zeus if i press the y key i can go into the zeus module now you'll notice something immediately and that's zeus is incredibly similar to the mission editor the only difference is this is a live mission. So if I zoom over to those soldiers, oh, lo and behold, they're actually not showing up the same way they're doing the mission maker. They are there, but now it's a live mission. They've actually, you know, they're actually standing a bit differently because of the, the way we set their behavior. If I right click on the map and click editable objects and go all mission objects, um, that'll basically add these guys to my interface. So now, now we can see the icons. So now, now, now they're there basically, as far as Zeus is concerned um from zeus you can do some really cool stuff through your modules you can do stuff like um you know call in fire support using a module so you know i've just called in a 155 howitzer um 155 mil howitzer using just the zeus so i didn't actually need to fire that with artillery so you know you could be like oh the enemy are air striking in position you can uh click or you can hold control and click multiple times on like the mortars for example and be like oh the enemy is shelling that pill and basically you'll see a bunch of different you know mortar shells coming uh, yeah there's an atomic bomb we'll do that at the end um just because it can delete stuff uh but let's say uh, like one of my favorite modules for zeusing is called lambs danger um or lambs Lam lambs is a really really good ai mod also hello bushrog um lambs is basically one of the, my top recommendations if you're running a mission where you're going to be having players like versus ai uh like uh cooperative um because it's got really cool modules for like 
garrisoning troops and buildings and patrols in particular in addition to a lot of other little modules here yeah task rush is amazing uh we, we use it all the time if we're zeusing missions honestly like for having enemies even task creep on the new vet on like the vietnam maps is really good as well or it used to be i think it's broken at the moment but um but let's say i want these guys to be on like a kind of like a patrol i'm gonna go task patrol and you find this under lamb's danger under the module section of the right menu let's go patrol um i'm gonna set the range of the patrol to 200 meters i'm gonna have it so it's got four waypoints so basically it'll be four different arbitrary points um i'm gonna choose dynamic patrol what that means is basically they will after they've done those four waypoints like they've walked you know to four different waypoints they'll they'll pick another four waypoints so basically this patrol will continue for eternity until they either you know they fired or um they you know the mission ends basically or they're engaged by something um dynamic reinforcements kind of new it means if uh another unit fights something that this unit will respond to that so i like to use it i like to turn that on uh so that, that's that's fine let's turn it on and see what happens basically from here you'll see now the guys are going on patrol and basically the module has chosen this point here uh that waypoint over there that waypoint over there and that waypoint over there it's like the four waypoints for the initial patrol and if we zoom down they're very leisurely going to be walking along on patrol so that's perfect for us to ambush them and if i press y again i'm back to my player character and i could go out and i could um you know i could start to ambush them and uh like engage them in the game with my friend player one who is uh brand new to armor i could be like hey man there's going to be a enemy attack uh enemy patrol into the southwest let's go and fuck him up and he goes oh i didn't you know i thought we could have a tank you know i thought we could uh maybe use a tank instead of just being on foot and i go okay yeah that's a good idea let's have a tank so you know you can go back into zeus with y um you could go to objects you could go to nato uh you could go to tank uh let's give him a Merkava um and we could place it with our crew and we just go yep uh there's a tank dude and we've put down a tank to use and it doesn't have any crew in it so you can just hop in and use it and you know my other friend can hop in the gun and fire and fight that patrol pretty easily um wherever they may be i think they're over there somewhere um but basically that's how zeusing works um but there's, there's so much more than that you know like it's it's a pretty basic you know obviously now they've uh, been engaged so now they're gonna fight me i mean they're shooting me every rock oh, there's the tank guy so he's he's caught him on and he's gonna fire his rocket probably at me eventually um if you're the zeus you also have access to stuff like uh, being able to teleport your stuff around so let's say i'm like oh well you can deal with that and i'm gonna teleport you can right click somewhere on the map and go teleport the zeus and that'll teleport you to um wherever you kind of had the mouse selected uh obviously there's also stuff like changing the weather um changing how stuff works um let's say i want to you know make some prisoners for like a prisoner of war mission i can toggle captive on a couple of soldiers and that'll make them you know captives as far as the game is concerned um and they'll become civilians or like you know independent and not um you know they'll be restrained you do stuff like that you can uh a lot of these functionalities are added by like eden enhanced and um zeus enhanced and stuff like that so make sure you do have you know if you don't have these options in your menu and you want these options have a look at your mod list i highly recommend thread and enhanced and um zeus enhanced for adding more function uh you can do stuff like you know uh play music in your missions um or you know like a bit of theme um you know i have my music turned off but for example uh that can be something that adds a lot of uh that adds a lot of like uh thematic kind of feel to your missions um so you can do that uh you can do all sorts of stuff like that let's just do that um oh i don't know why it's not working You know what? I'm just going to turn my sound off again.
Yeah, we haven't used Achilles for a while, but Achilles was another good, um, another really good, like, Zeus functionality adder, uh, mod, mod, so play around on the Steam Workshop, there's plenty of them out there. Um, you know, you can change the weather, let's make it, uh, you know, no rain, no overcast, no lightning, no rainbow, waves, wind direction, no fog, let's just turn it off, so we just go change weather, boom, now it's sunny. Um... You can do stuff like, you know, like the garrison I was telling you about before. Uh, let's say instead of fighting, we want to put these guys in buildings. Um, we can just go. We can just move them. I can tell. Uh, then I can garrison them with lambs. Uh, we can just go like that. And it puts them in buildings instead. Um, so you can, you know, set up like a base filled with enemy occupants. So I really, I really like lambs for that sort of thing. Um, you can build new respawns, you know, you can place a respawn, uh, on this side of the building as well, for example, that'll add a new respawn for blue four soldiers over there, um, in addition to the one we placed in the actual mission editor, so Zeus basically is mission editing, but on the fly, um, which is pretty cool, like, it really adds a lot to the game, being able to be like, oh there's a halo coming in you know on the blue smoke or whatever and just being able to like place shit like that like it's that easy um you know and then from you know the perspective on the ground suddenly these buildings have enemies in them and it's a lot more you know it's a lot more like oh it's like a real you know like a real combat situation It just adds a lot to the game, being able to, like, you know, do certain things uh, live on the fly. You know, if, if the players are doing really well, you can spawn more enemies, or vice versa, you know, if they're getting overwhelmed, you can spawn less. Um, you know, you can spawn in, you know, vehicles and helicopters, and uh, the reinforcement module is another one I really like. Um, you can do things like, let's go, let's do that, let's do that, and let's, let's say we want some, like, uh, thematic nato reinforcements coming in we can go to like blue four let's go to nato let's go to helicopters let's go uh ghost hawk let's go nato soldiers let's do a special forces uh what else? let's do it's just a recon squad so we've got eight guys in the helo let's go lz alpha and we'll do fast rock and rp alpha combat what this does is spawns in a friendly halo it'll fly to the lz the soldiers will fast rope out and then they'll run to the rp which is over there to reinforce me so you can create you know kind of thematic uh enemy insertions or like um uh allied reinforcements um kind of on the fly pretty easy and they look pretty good they're a little buggy sometimes like you do have to kind of play with it trial and error like paradrop for example will quite often throw soldiers all across the ao so and you know look at them wiggle down <laughs> but yeah in general it works pretty good and you can set it up so the halo would just stay here or you can set it up i set it up so the halo will return to the waypoint over there and then despawn um because let's say i just want them to insert and as you can see they're running to the rp So, you know, there's lots of really cool modules that let you do kind of that sort of thing to make your mission feel a bit more alive rather than just, like, a flat, like, go here, kill thing. Um, you know, you could be like, there's reinforcements coming, hold out for five minutes or something, you know, and then spawn in, like, some reinforcement modules. And then you could be like, oh, shit, there's, um, you know, there's enemy forces coming in on trucks as well and uh, set up another reinforcements, like, zone and spawn in a bunch of like uh hostiles doing the same kind of thing um but with vehicles rather than uh you know rather than on like a heli uh, helicopter so you know you could do the same kind of thing and we just do bravo instead of lz alpha and we do the same kind of thing exactly and basically this truck instead of being the helicopter this truck will drive over to the lz drop out all the guys and then they'll run to the point and you've got yourself a bit of a you know you've got yourself a bit of a thematic fight already through very little effort on my part you know you've got ground reinforcements and air reinforcements in kind of a thematic way ai will typically follow the road as well so that adds to a bit of the immersion that you can actually you know you can almost make a convoy 
um you can say that you know there's three trucks of enemy coming in and just do it like that and they're all going to go to whatever you selected last which is lz brava um and you can call them what you want you know you can call them you know uh like hot lz or something you know it doesn't it's not limited by what the game tells you you know it's it's very armor editor and zeus are very customizable for how you want to do things um as you can see here the ai can be a bit buggy sometimes i have no idea what that truck is doing so this is where zeus comes in handy we can kind of you know be like okay that's fucking around i don't know and you can kind of just get rid of stuff that's causing problems um as you can see the reinforcements have turned up and they're engaging the enemies and if you're playing as zeus too you can uh, do cool things that you can uh, hold control and double click on a unit and you'll take control of it so let's say you know you want to fight some players as a zeus quickly you could do that uh it's called remote controlling and to get out of it you just press y again and that soldier is now back to being controlled by the ai rather than me the exception obviously being um your the original player characters like you know my actual character there is just gonna sit still until i go out of this so yeah that's that's basically the benefit of zeus um so let, let's let's say we're happy with that mission you know we tested it we've got zeus we've got the two slots it's all seeming to be working um how do we actually you know get the mission set up for other people um now you can you can save it here and then you can export it to multiplayer through here through the mission um that is one way to do it if you're making missions for vanilla that's probably totally totally fine and i wouldn't I would say that would probably work fine um you could probably publish it to the steam workshop directly as well through that um but the way we do it in the 143rd is a little bit different so i'm going to show you how you do that so let's say i'm happy with this mission i'm just going to save it and we're done here basically in game so let's let's exit out now i'm just going to add back my display capture I'm just going to add back, uh, there we go, there we go. So, to export it, I use a tool called, um, basically called, uh, blah, 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 blah. where's the documents? Um, if you go into your documents, you should see under Armour 3, under other profiles, you should see, uh, like your profile you made your mission in and they're under multiplayer missions or mp missions this is basically all the different saves i've made of missions um and if we go down here here we go we can see eden tutorial this is the mission we just made um and in here you've basically got the mission.sqm file which is basically what you've placed on the map and uh mission settings like your um basically the description and summary and what the mission's called and uh what time of day it is and the weather and stuff like that and from here, if I was going to use, uh, put this mission on our server in the 143rd, I would basically right click on this and I would pack this into what's called a PBO file um, with what I call, uh, what's a program called PBO Manager, which adds this interaction into Windows. Um, and I'd basically go pack into PBO and it would turn everything in this mission folder um, into a, it's kind of like zipping it. It's a little bit like compressing it into a zip, but it's uh, packing it into a mission. Um, and if I scroll down here, now there'll be an Eden tutorial .stratus.pbo, and I can basically upload that to our server, and then we could play that mission. And on the server, it would basically have uh, those two slots, player one and player two, um, and player two would have Zeus, and we could play from there. And that that would be the the you know the long and short of it basically, um, that for a very basic mission. For something a bit more advanced, as an example, if I go into my mac v sog profile uh major general does it um i've got like the last mission we played uh what's it called operation biggest um which is basically this folder here as you can see here there's a couple of additional files so basically we have um we have the mission.sqm which is everything i've placed on the map 
but then we've also got a description.ext and a cba settings.sqf and you might go oh what do those do so let's have a look now description.ext is basically kind of a more advanced form of what you've already put in the mission under like the attributes menu um so what i've done here is i've put in like the author like dozette i put in the mission name and the description but this has a couple of settings we use for our dedicated server specifically like it has the way the respawn works um and it basically has like what picture it uses for the loading screen stuff like that is all set through this description.ext um so you can add like custom sounds through this and you can add some additional support and scripting and stuff through this um so the description.ext is just kind of like a more advanced mission summary file i guess um i use it manual mainly just for like hard setting the mission description and stuff probably don't need it for everything but if you're making missions for our unit in particular um you will need to kind of know how this file works uh what you'll probably be setting initially is literally just the name of who made the mission at the top here so you call you know name it after yourself um and you'd probably just call it like whatever you want to call your mission like the the patrol zone or something you know i don't, I don't know what you want to call your mission you, you, you'd put it in there basically um and then like what the mission's about like the description of the mission um i like to put a version number as well like a v1 um for this one in particular just because i want to make sure if i'm making iterations or changes to the mission like if playtesting goes horribly and it doesn't work um i want to make sure i know which version of my mission this is that i've uploaded or what version i'm working on uh just so if i make changes, you know it's basic like any like anything like programming you want to kind of know what version of a program it is because there's been iterative changes so I, I like to put a version number in but that's that's personal preference um now cba settings that is basically just close all these because these are basically the same files we're going to be looking at but i just want to make sure they're not uh interfering with my sublime um cba settings is basically all those add-on settings we had a look at for mods but in text form um and you want to set it for the mission that you put on the server through the text file rather than in game um so after you've set all your settings for like you know like that ace medical fracture chance we looked at where we changed it from 80 percent to 20 percent that's in here but instead of being like a little bar you can drag it's like a numerical value or like a true and false um so if we go down to ace medical uh i think it's called something like fracture chance as you can see here fracture chance is set to like 0 0.201231 that basically means 20 percent. like it's it's you know it's rounded up a little bit but sorry not rounded up it's in decimals but it's effectively 20 percent um so you could set all your mods through this uh this text document but um fuck that like look how many there are so i would recommend you set it in game through the uh eden uh, and then you export it and copy paste you export into this uh cba settings and then basically once you've basically got all this done and you basically set up your mission how you want it to feel you've placed all your objects on the map you've play tested it and made sure it's working uh you can go back out here to the folder and you can pack all those files into the pbo so pack it into pbo and as you can see down here i have already done that uh operation biggest done so that's that's the same mission just as one neat file basically um it's one file containing that cba settings and the mission file and the description.ext um, and I uploaded that to the server and we turned on the server with my settings and we turned on that map and then we could play it and it's it's the mission where you take over that temple I showed you um, and then from there I did a lot of the unit placement uh, live in Zeus um, and we actually have two Zeuses for Mac VSOG we normally have uh, myself and Lolly so hopefully that gives you kind of a rough overview um, it kind of depends on who you're making missions for what kind of mission you want to make what model list you use and if your stuff is run like off a local computer or if it's like a dedicated server um so if you have any questions feel free to email me um at dozetwaifu at gmail.com um or you can message me on like twitter or um i'm basically available on facebook um 
i'll basically put this up on my youtube which is just dozette um and then from there you can uh, re-watch this or check the description for more links um we're also recruiting for the 143rd i don't know if you'll come there from this uh, this is mainly aimed at people in the 143rd already but um if you do see this video and you're interested in playing with like a warhammer 40,000 theme unit we do a lot of other stuff as well but if you're interested um we are recruiting basically so i'll put a description to our discord in the video as well um we mainly our main ops uh we operate as death corpse of craig um of the 143rd siege regiment or the siege army um but we also do like you know we have times available for north america europe um and we also do other stuff as i said so like uh we have some world war Two fun ops we've got some world war three uh like tom clancy's in war fun ops uh people do all sorts of stuff we play other games as well uh war game red dragon hearts of iron um we're doing some a bit of the mike force the new uh vietnam war cdlc um for armor we yeah it's basically just a fun hangout zone uh to do lots of different stuff so come hang out anyway i hope this was useful and oh i didn't show the nook you know what you did right i'm gonna show the nook let's get back into the game i'm so sorry <laughs> bush frog i'm sorry i was going to um let's delete that and just go into game capture and i'll just make sure i got my modelist loaded takes a little while to boot the game now with mission packing like in your documents folder you can do it on the fly with the game open but um i've had some problems where armor decides to re-download all the mods and glitch the fuck out and i worry that editing uh config files on the fly is probably not a good way to keep the game secure or um stable i mean so i would recommend you probably don't edit files outside of the game but uh, like while it's running but uh at the same time i don't know they probably don't affect how the main game operates so uh, take it with a grain of salt i've done it it works fine i think but I, I recommend probably closing the game when you're editing configs uh let's try a different map let's try uh like a more 40k map Just so you can kind of get a vibe for something different. Pretty dark map, actually. You know what? Let's not use this map because it's way too dark to actually see. It's like middle of the day and it's still like really dark. Uh, let's do. Uh, let's do Molden. I like Molden. It's another very greek looking island um much like the base game altus and stratus but it's I, I don't know it's a bit more flat and open very quickly what i've done there is i basically just placed a guy made him a playable slot and given him zeus powers um in a pretty short period of time and i'm just gonna place a respawn and i'm just gonna go to uh, multiplayer and set it as respawn a custom position and that's probably enough honestly i want to get a nice view over this bay and then we'll look the other hill maybe
I mean, he was fine. Now with the nuke, you can actually change a couple of the settings. Um, you can have it destroy certain meters, so we'll just make it a really low destruction radius so it doesn't actually just like kill me. Um, but we'll make it uh, we'll make it change the color of the map when it goes off. And let's do it. Uh, yeah. Now turn Zeus off. <laughs> so first the flash. And there's the clash. And unfortunately the way the nuke works is it only uh like deletes objects that you placed in the mission uh like in the mission maker or in um zeus so stuff like pre-done map assets like the buildings over there um they'll they'll they won't destroy sadly um but if i go over there now these are all fine you know like that it's just it just color corrects the map basically um and it doesn't destroy these buildings, which is kind of sad because, like, it's a really cool effect. Um, yeah, it uses the earthquake basically as well to simulate that, you know, the uh, the rumble of the nuke going off. So it kind of uses a couple of the different, uh, like, base armor features to simulate, like, a nuke. Um, though, if you do want to destroy buildings, you totally can. Uh, using, like, the fire support modules, I'm pretty sure, are a bit more effective at actually destroying buildings. So while the nuke's going off, you could theoretically, if you're quick, use like the fire support module to try and delete uh, some buildings, which immediately proved me wrong. Uh, I think these blow up. I'm sure these can fall. I'll just try a bunch at once. Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, so yeah, you can, I think you can ruin buildings using, like, fire support modules still. Um, so you can theoretically, you know, destroy a bunch of buildings and then detonate an oak um, across the map and then players get there. It'll be, like, ruined, so it'll look like a nuke's gone off a bit more visually. Yeah, that's a bit better. That's a bit more looking a bit more fucked. Um, and Earthquake, I think I have access to... Yeah, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure there would be. It's a bit beyond my, um, it's a bit beyond what I know to do, but I, it's it's definitely something you probably could do with scripting. Uh, it's got a pretty advanced uh, level of scripting. Uh, like, the language is pretty detailed, so, like, you really probably could. Um, if there's not already a mod for it, like, real note destruction or something. Um, but I, I haven't personally played around with scripting that much. Oh yeah, so the earthquake destroys buildings. You know what? I don't know. I I have no idea. I know I know there's like a Bohemia wiki that kind of goes into detail of all the different scripting like um, variables and the the stuff that calls the different uh, like what it, like how it works basically. But it's a, it's a bit beyond me. And I mean, the in-game editor pretty much does everything I need it to. One day, maybe. I've, I've definitely used scripts before for, like, stuff like the Fortify tool. Um, and for a live mod, I've used a couple of, like, scripts, but they're pretty, like, pre-made ones. They weren't ones I, like, custom wrote or anything. I just edited what I had, basically. Is it just better or is there no effect when you're in Zeus? Oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, I guess I guess you could make a lot more effective nuke with a um, earthquake and uh, the nuke combined rather than just the nuke by itself. But yeah, I guess that's what's kind of cool about the, um, about the, uh, Eden Editor, is there's a lot of room for playing around and making your own missions. Um, we had a mission recently, we played with, uh, Web Knight, who's like a mod developer, um, which had, like, cutscenes, and he had, like, custom, uh, light scripts, for not a script, but like a mod for 
headlamps for certain helmets um and like breathing special effects for gas masks um so like a lot's possible in the game if not in the base game then through mods um so yeah a lot of options uh this has just been basic a basic look at it um there's a lot more resources out there on the internet and youtube and um bear in mind a lot of the information out there is made for armor 2 or operation flashpoint um or yeah any of the earlier bohemia games but a lot of it works because i think it's basically built on the same engine with reiterations um so a lot of those tutorials that were built for like the 2d editor or the scripting was built for something older um it will still work in armor 3 or it'll work with slight tweaks so yeah don't get too disheartened if you find really old tutorials they can still normally be used in normal armor um but it can also be a bit of a pain sometimes so feel free to message me um dm me or um join our unit and have a look but i'll leave some links in the description on the youtube which again is dozette um and if you i hope this helped basically um it's been a bit free form not really scripted or anything so i've probably rambled a bit and said the same thing multiple times but hope it helped and have a good one Follow, but not so much here. It's mostly just your crew against the awfulness of the desert waste.